Uh, Pete Williams joins me now, who broke the story exclusively on NBC News just now. Um, Pete, talk to us about the importance, the significance of Steve Breyer stepping down and what you think is probably his thinking. Well, as you know, Andrea, there was a discussion at the end of last term about whether he was going to step down. It was clear that he had thought about it and then decided not to do so. He said publicly at the time, uh, he had just written a book about the Supreme Court and about its legacy and why the country follows Supreme Court decisions, and he said that he, he didn't want the timing of his retirement to be seen as something political. So apparently he has decided that enough time has passed that that's not going to be a concern now. Of course, there was enormous pressure on him and has been since President Biden was elected, especially after the death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, which gave Donald Trump a chance to appoint uh, Amy Coney Barrett to the court. There was lots of pressure on Breyer to step down, despite his, the fact that he's in good health, so that his successor could be chosen while there's still a Democrat in the White House and a Democratic control of the U.S. Senate. Uh, so the fact is that whatever, whether that is the reason he's stepping down or not, that is the consequence of what it will be in order to uh, give the Democrats a chance to keep the current 6-3 split on the court, conservatives and liberals, with Justice Stephen, Stephen Breyer being the senior liberal on the court, followed by uh, Sonia Sotomayor and Elena Kagan uh, against the six, three, uh, the six conservatives. But um, our understanding is that, that his intention is to step down at the end of the Supreme Court term, which would be in late June or early July, rather than the uh, sometimes customs that Supreme Court justices follow where they say that they will step down upon the confirmation uh, of the Senate, the nomination and confirmation of their successor. Um, and it may be that Justice Breyer wants to uh, make it a little more urgent for the Senate to act in order to get his, his successor confirmed. And the White House, as you know, Andrea, the president has said that he was committed to appointing a black female to the Supreme Court. And the two names that have come most often uh, up are Katanji Brown Jackson, who's a federal appeals court here in, a judge here in Washington, and Leon de Kruger, who is a justice on the California Supreme Court, uh, Judge Brown Jackson, rather, a district court judge here in, in Washington. So those are two names that that we'll undoubtedly be hearing a lot more of in the coming in the coming days. But I, I think it's important to say that as far as we know, this has nothing to do with the justice's health. He's 83, he turns 84 in August, and he's, you know, certainly in fine health as far as we know. So I don't think that's the decision. But I, I think maybe he's decided that after 28 years, uh, it's time for him to move on. And so uh, we expect the formal announcement, the formal notification to the White House to come within the next 24 hours or so, and then perhaps some sort of formal recognition of the fact that this is happening.